Okay, now I'm gonna put the uh, Y axis uh, back on. Um, I cleaned it up, made sure there wasn't any dirt and particles and stuff from drilling that fell down there. I put a new layer of grease on there. I just, I know, I just used some synthetic super lube uh, stuff from I got from Home Depot. Um, I put some on here, cleaned this up, put some on here, put the uh, gib back in here, got the screws in a good position there. I'm just gonna slide this back on. Hopefully the uh, gib screws aren't too tight. Oh, no, that's good. Alright, just gonna slide that to the back there. Put a little pressure on the gib screws a little bit. Okay, we're gonna put this thing on its back for the rest of the uh, for the rest of this part of it. So let me just tilt the next part. I'm going to get this uh, the X Y axis ready to go on. Um, I guess the thing we have to do is we have to disassemble it. Uh, so let me get an Allen and uh, take this thing apart. I think we got uh, a couple Allens right here. Alright, this has got to go, this part has to go in here, in there, but I can't get this to there, this is going to have to go in through here, so I'm going to have to take the uh, the coupling off and these nuts and, uh, and attach this onto here, so, alright. it off with the uh, love joy here. Oh, that's right. This was uh, American. that up and slide that off. I'll just leave it like that. And then I have to take this apart. Oh, that's loose. I guess they expect you to take it apart, so it's uh, loose. Take those two off. Okay. And that just slips right out. Okay, well that's easy enough. So, we'll uh, clean this off a little. And I guess this just mounts right on there. And I think I was supposed to keep some screws for that. Okay, well it looks like they gave us some screws for this. Uh, make sure that the bearing is still there. There's two of them, one on the top and one on the bottom. And then uh, I'm just going to take two screws out of the kit. Uh, the ones that came with the, the Miller are black screws, but uh, the one I see in Brad's video are uh, chrome colored, so I guess uh, I'll just do the same. Just put the, these two in here. Get the right key. Alright. Okay, now it's time to feed uh, the screw through the hole there. So, I'm uh, First I'm going to take the, uh, the zip tie off. Right. And then back this 
down to the approximate position it needs to be and uh, feed the screw through. Okay, well I'm not sure if this is the fault of uh, the way the ball screw was, the screw was made, or if they changed dimensions on the mill, or, or maybe they didn't make the mill quite the right size, same size for each one. I don't know, but uh, the only way I could get this thing in was to take out like maybe three sixteenths of an inch of this. I just took a sawzall and just cut it like this and then cut it on angles like this until I can get enough material out so I can get this thing in there and this up high enough and this seated it was like the distance from the end of the ball screws to the end of this it just didn't fit and there's no way to put this thing on so uh, I don't know that's that's what I found so I'll have to ask CNC Fusion about that uh, I don't know I looked at it like five different times so I don't know anyways it's in now uh, I got this tightened down here uh, I guess sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do as uh, with a Keith Fenner I don't know turn right uh, get her done whatever you gotta do to get her done so suppose I could have contacted them and figured it out but I gotta get this thing working so and then I'm gonna tighten up the set screw on here uh, just center it in there in the space here uh, and then tighten down the set screw over here okay so I'm gonna put the two nuts on here Tighten the bottom one down. Ain't snug, but not too tight. If you tighten it too much, the uh, it'll compress against the uh, the bearings, and it won't work. So, and then we'll put the Lovejoy connector on there and tighten that down. And then use that to tighten the top one down on the bottom nut. Not so much as to squeeze the bearings, but <clears throat> just to lock it in place so it doesn't back off. Make sure it still rotates. See, it's still rotating good, so that's good. All right. Okay, the next step is to uh, put the uh, plate back on, the mounting plate that the stepper motor will go on to. So, just uh, get that lined up. Put uh, two of the screws, uh, actually you know what, I think we'll do two screws here. Two cap screws here. The other four holes are actually for the motor, so you have to do these two. These two screws here first. I'll get those on. this in. I guess you could put it on the motor or you could put it in. I'm just going to put it in. I guess I could have put it in before I put this on, but 
kind of a, there we go. Okay. All right, I got that in. And then I'm going to take my, uh, my next stepper motor here. And, uh, I guess whichever way I want the, uh, wires to go, I guess I'll have it go this way because the wires from the x-axis will be over here so they'll both go this way so okay route this this way oops I hope we take these screws off Alright, got our motor on. Nice tight fit there. Okay. Alright. The four screws in. Like I said before, if I had a little bit on a drill, this would probably be faster. But uh, I'll just come back when I have them all in. Okay, now I'm going to tighten down the uh, the set screw. Uh, it's right here that uh, connects the uh, stepper motor shaft to the uh, to the Lovejoy. Oh, keep forgetting. Need to use an American. No, it's not metric. So uh, everything is on this is metric except for this right here. All right, pretty good and tight. Now we'll uh, run it up and down. Make sure there's no binding. All right, I think that completes uh, that portion. Um, let me uh, tilt this back uh, in its proper position and move on to the x-axis. Okay, I've got it uh, back upright and I thought I'd uh, just show you what it looked like before I put the, uh, the guards back. I started putting one on, but I figured I'd show you what it looked like, so... Uh, right there you can see where I cut it out, uh, anyways, so that's what it looks like from the top, and, uh, I'll just put these guards, uh, back on off camera, uh, just the same as taking them off, just putting them back on the opposite direction, so, alright, well, I'm putting the, uh, desk guards on, and I discovered that, uh, the uh, screws don't quite line up. Uh, I can get one screw in. As you can tell, the uh, the holes don't line quite line up quite right. This is originally what was there on there, and these are the holes that were replaced these to put the 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 guard in. And uh, you can see they don't quite line up. This is lined up here. But this one is not. I don't know. It's like a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch off. Uh, I really don't have time to go drilling and tapping right now, so I'm probably just gonna put it in by one hole for now, and then uh, think about that later. I don't know. I may end up changing the, the guard for a different guard, a heavier duty rubber guard or something. So, all right. Okay, got the uh, the dust guards back on, and uh, we're ready to move on to the uh, putting the table back on the uh, the x-axis. All right, 